continues as the Gators of the University of Florida, ranked number 19 in the nation, come calling against the Auburn Tigers, ranked number 12 in the country. The current standings of the Southeastern Conference, Alabama on top with a perfect mark at 5-0, oh, then comes Florida, Auburn, and Tennessee, all with identical records of 3-1. and one. Hello, everybody. I'm Ron Franklin, and welcome to another fantastic Saturday evening of college football here on ESPN. Well, when you look back at 1989 for the Florida Gators, off the field has simply been a nightmare. It all started on October the 15th. That's when head football coach Galen Hall turned in his resignation for admitted NCAA violations. And just over a week after that, four Florida players were suspended for wagering on college football games. One of them was starting quarterback Kyle Morris. And now this past week, Norm Sloan and his entire basketball uh, coaching staff resigned at Florida under pressure. There is an ongoing university investigation along with an investigation by the NCAA right now. Kevin Kiley joins me on the telecast tonight. And amidst all of this going on, a young interim head coach by the name of Gary Darnell has to bring his club to Auburn, Alabama to play. Well, Rod, you know, the one thing that a head coach hates is distractions. Even minor distractions will upset a team. The University of Florida has been in a minefield with bombs going off all around them. What they need to do, what Gary Darnell has to get them to do, is focus on the Auburn team. Forget about the fact that they lost the head coach, lost their starting quarterback, and there's turmoil in the athletic department of Florida. If they don't focus against Auburn, they'll get blown out. Well, lost in all this also, this is a very historic evening. This is the 50th anniversary of Jordan-Hare Stadium. And in fact, the first two teams to play in the stadium, Auburn and Florida. They tied seven apiece. And that was 50 years ago, you know, and a lot of things have changed over 50 years, but the score of this game probably won't change that much. Lost in all of the turmoil at Florida is the fact that the Gators have a very fine football team. The number one defense in the nation, they give up just 79 yards a game, and they, in fact, may have the best running back in the nation in Emmett Smith. When this game is over, barring injuries, Emmett will be the leading ball carrier in the nation. Traditionally, for the Auburn Tigers, this is the toughest part of their schedule. Well, you know, Pat Dye was brought up, born and raised in Georgia, and, of course, he went to the University of Georgia, grew up not far from Augusta. In fact, he held the gallery rope for the Masters, and he's very familiar with Amen Corner. He calls this part of his schedule Amen Corner. The last four games, three games, three of those teams are Florida, Georgia, and then Alabama this year for the first time ever at Auburn. The Tigers have had a problem maybe not focusing on the rest of the schedule, but focusing on that Alabama game. If they overlook Florida tonight, they're in trouble. This is always a great matchup in the Southeastern Conference, and tonight over 85,000 strong on hand to see the ball game. ESPN's College Football Saturday. Thatch Avenue at Mel Street in uh, a small city named Auburn, Alabama. This is in eastern Alabama, kind of quiet on a Friday afternoon, but today on a college football Saturday, just about two hours before kickoff time, they start streaming in, and there are the results. In fact, tonight we have a record as the Auburn Tigers take on the Florida Gators, the largest night event in the state of Alabama, and the largest crowd here at Jordan here, 85,214 people on hand. War Eagle, that is the chant at this stadium. The Florida Gators will kick it off to the Auburn Tigers. Both of these ball clubs, as Kevin said just a moment ago, off the top of the telecast, still very much in the chase in the Southeastern Conference. John David Francis will kick it off for the Florida Gators. Wearing number seven, taking over the duties after an injury earlier this year to the regular kicker. And back in a deep safety is Herbert Casey, number 20. Averaging just over 20 per return, and as you can see, his longest is 35. We'll have a lot of orange and a lot of blue in this crowd tonight because basically it is the color for both of these ball clubs. The Auburn Tigers facing what their head coach calls Amen Corner. And also, as Pat Dye says, looking for a personality for his offense. We'll see tonight if that comes it out. Here's the kickoff by Francis. Goes deep to the left side. Pedro Cherry. And the ball goes out of bounds and a marker goes down out at the seven yard line and Francis will come back and kick it all over again. 
Well, as we told you, 50 years ago, these two teams met in the stadium, but the first meeting was actually in 1912. Auburn leads it. They hold an edge in games at home very substantially. In 26 games that have been played, they have won 21. The last time they got together, 1988, it was a shutdown. 16-0. Gary Darnell, the interim head coach for the Florida Gators. Boy, with a load this guy has had on his shoulders. And Kevin took it over the third week in October after the resignation of Galen Hall. Told his players, just remember what you came to Florida for. Keep focused on the intention that you had when you came to this university, the education and playing football. Forget about the rest. Passes again, this time for the 30. And again, he goes deep to the left side. This is Cherry from the 8. 20. Crosses the 30, and Auburn will take it over with very good field position. And now for tonight's road handlers, starting lineups. At quarterback, Reggie Slack out of Milton, Florida. Behind him, James Joseph and Alex Strong is a substitute tar a starter tonight. Greg Taylor and Alexander Wright are the wide receiver. The tight end is Vic Victor Hall. Up front, the center, John Hudson out of Paris, Tennessee. The two guards, King and Rose, and the tackles, Bob Meeks and Rob Selby. At the top of the eye, tailback, James Joseph, and he's playing with a leg injury, happened against Mississippi State, takes it for a couple. Here are the starters for Florida. Culpepper is the nose guard. The defensive tackles, Murray and Tony McCoy. The outside backers, Godfrey Miles and Huey Richardson, both very good ones, as are the inside backers, Pat Moore and Jerry Odom. In the secondary, it's Watkins and Fain, and the safeties, Will White and Barkley. Flip back. Slack under pressure, and he will fall down as he tries to scramble out of the grasp of a Florida defensive player. Rob Selby will knock him down for a loss of seven, along with Murray. Key to this game for Auburn is to have success on first down and their short passing game. The Florida defense, extremely small and quick. You see him go by Reggie Slack. Reggie needs to be able to run the ball coming out of the pocket tonight to break down the Florida defense. He didn't get it done on that play. Stripped over Selby's leg. Swings it out of the backfield. It's Joseph. Turns it up at the 35, and he will be stopped at the 36. Missing the first down by about five yards. Chris Dickinson will have to come on and punt. And a very large contingent from the Florida Gators up and cheering in the end zone to our left. It's going to be Richie Nell. An average of almost 40 per kick, as long as 62 this year. That's Lomax. Almost blocked. In fact, I think he got a piece of it. It takes an Auburn bounce, and it's going to be taken and out of bounds by oh. Stacy Simmons on a very dangerous move at the 35-yard line. Florida's quickness is probably the biggest thing they have going for them, and they are going to pressure Auburn all night. You can see that ball just about blocked by Tim Paw. Right side of your screen, number 99. Here he comes. Tim Paw. He almost overran it. Seemed like they kicked the ball underneath him. Douglas back to throw on the first play. He will keep. Turns it back up at the 40, out to the 42-yard line. Let's meet the Florida offense of the young man who just carried out of Liberty, Texas, Donald Douglas. The running backs for the Gators, Smith and Smith. Emmett, keep an eye on it. He'll carry it many times tonight. Simmons and Mills are the wide receivers. Harvey Thomas is the tight end. The center, Cal Dixon out of Merritt Island, Florida. Mark White and Chris Bromley are the guards and the tackles. Glenn Neely and John Durden. Very short running room. Fernando Horn, number 77, steps up into the hole. One of the first men there. Walter Tate, the big nose guard for the Auburn Tigers. They call him barbecue. Rocker and Horn are the defensive tackles. Outside, it's Craig Ogletree and Billingsley. Inside, the backers are Riggins and Daryl Crawford. At the corners, Eric Ramsey and Corey Barlow. And the safeties for the Tigers, John Wiley and Dennis Wallace.
Alex Smith cuts behind his blockers off right tackle, will have the first down behind the blocking of Bromley and John Durden, Wayne Bilesma of Opelika, steps up to make the hit. The thing that Emmett Smith does so well is he waits for his fullback, number 39, Cedric Smith. Watch Smith come behind Cedric Smith. He reads the block, makes the cut right, and is able to pick it right through the seam. Now that's excellent blocking by the fullback that makes the yardage for Florida and Emmett Smith. Right up the middle, goes for about three yards, is tripped up by Daryl Crawford, a sophomore out of Montrose, Alabama. The numbers on Emmett Smith this year, 1,128 yards, and look at the average per carry. Over six, he scored ten times, and he is the focus every time that Florida is, uh, regardless of who they're playing. Oh, make no mistake about it, Florida is a field position, ball control team, they do not throw the ball well. Smith to the left side, looks for a block, has three, has four, Rocker hits him from behind, also Craig Ogletree, number 94, and he is close to the first down, they're going to spot it in the vicinity of the 45. Two things I want you to watch, he's not at full speed, and watch him square his shoulders, he's going to go left, before he turns up here, watch him square his shoulders, read his blockers, and head into the hole. That's what Emmett Smith does so well. Not tremendous explosion, but excellent acceleration when he decides to pick the hole. Four, four carries for 13 yards. Emmett Smith to the right side. Breaks it across for five and has the first down. Frankie Stankotis coming up from his strong safety position to knock his legs out from under him. But it's a Florida Gator first down. These are the career numbers on Emmett Smith. 988 yards last year. He was injured. He did not have a great year. His last year, he's had a difficult time with Florida coming off probation when he got to school. And now difficulty and injuries, he's had trouble. Play action. Did not catch and Douglas reverses his field. Has one blocker in front, and he's going to turn what looked like a definite negative into a huge plus. Craig Ogletree had to come back and knock him down. Well, you oh can my. see the look on Ogletree's face. Donald Douglas, just a freshman. This is the reason he's starting. He's an athlete. Whoa. Nobody knows what happened here. The kid is just an excellent player, an excellent runner with a pretty good arm. One of the top five quarterbacks in the nation in high school. He was a sought-after player. Coming in, 18 rushes, 67 yards. The book on him, very good athlete and handles the option well, as you could see just a moment ago. Florida has called a timeout to stop the clock with 9.02 left in its opening period. We have no score. This is Auburn. He is brought to you by Volvo, the car that's famous for its safety, durability, and longevity. And by UPS. Fast, efficient service to 175 countries and territories worldwide. Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley from Jordan Hare Stadium. And they celebrate a milestone tonight. 50 years of football in this stadium. It started off as Auburn Stadium. That was way back in 1939. Cedric Smith, the big fullback, breaks it big. He will have the first down, plus about eight, as Wiley comes up from his safety position. Cedric Smith has carried the ball only 29 times this year. In fact, as the coaches describe him, they say he carries it about once a month. But as you can see, when he does, he knows what to do with it. Out of Enterprise, Alabama, he's a senior. Nice block by Cal Dixon on that play. Cedric Smith is a team leader for Florida. Very quiet, does his job. Pitch comes to Emmett Smith. Pressure from Auburn, no place to go. David Rocker. Also, Quentin Riggins, the fine inside linebacker on the left for the Auburn Tigers, coming up. But you could see blue jerseys, 
very quickly coming on the play. Nice defensive job. The thing for the Auburn Tiger defense that Pat Dye said earlier this week is that now they have been through the wars a bit. They started off very young this year. They know what is expected of them. Whistle on the play and right in front of the, the uh, student section here at Auburn and whether the 25 second clock ran out I think it did communication very difficult for the Florida Gators at that end of the stadium a five yard penalty. the one thing Florida cannot afford here Ron is to get in a passing situation Lex Smith is the passing quarterback. He is not starting. Donald Douglas is an option quarterback. They don't want to get in long yardage situations. Emmett Smith, as they pull the guard, they try to run the trap. Reverses his field all the way back to the 39 yard line, and he is covered in blue. Fernando Horn and David Rocker combining on the stop for a loss of 14. Left side of your screen, you're going to see it. It's a counter. They're trying to get Emmett loose, but Rocker is all over him. Now, great players will try to make great plays. Ogletree runs him down, makes him go deep, but Auburn has a great defense to counter. And it's Smith he loses yardage to run a field goal position. That was number 12, Corey Barlow, who finished him off as he was going down. Low back in motion, whistles and flags are down. And the 25-second clock, I believe, had run down again. Yes, it had. An extremely difficult place to play, and particularly with a crowd of over 85,000, most of whom are Auburn uh, partisans, and the ball now has been pushed back to the 44-yard line. Florida needs the 10. Emmett Smith, blasted down by 56, Daryl Crawford. Wow, I just said that Pat Dye said this defense had had to grow up in a hurry, and they now had been through the wars and knew what was expected from them. And you could tell on that series, as Hank Rohn is back to punt for the Florida Gators, that they have come of age. Watson inside the 10 signals for the fair catch and the Tigers will take it over deep in the Rome territory. 37 yard punt by Rome. We are the most complex life form on earth. At the time the Florida Gators ate up 7 minutes 11 seconds and came away with no points. goes to Joseph, tries to get by the first tackler who penetrated, and Culpepper is right there to knock him down for a loss. Now, we talked about the crowd just a moment ago in the huge student section. The rule change, of course, in 1989. The referee's timeout is first, then a timeout, and a PA announcement. Then after that, the damage starts to happen. But a moment ago, the freshman quarterback was unable to take advantage of that situation. That's a lot to think about for the young man. And also, I don't think there's that many audibles in the game for Florida. The probably, crowd probably not bothering. Draw play. This is strong. Hit at the line of scrimmage, and he will be knocked out after no game. Boy, this Florida defense, as you look at some other scores, Miami, 40 to 10 over East Carolina. Michigan wins big over Purdue this afternoon. 
Stanford upends the Bruins of UCLA. And Louisville, huge over Western Kentucky. All of those are now final. Well, UCLA really having a rocky season. Yes, they are. All the way back into his end zone. Eludes one tackler. Almost goes down. Fumbles the ball. It's recovered by Auburn at the five-yard line. That's Chris Gray who got... Nope, they're going to say... We saw an Auburn jersey out at first. Jimmy Harper has not signaled as yet. It is Florida's football at the five-yard line. Florida has forced 20 fumbles this year, but they had only recovered five. Now, Reggie doing a pretty good job, and right here he starts thinking about where he is on the field, forgets about the ball, had it hanging just a little bit low. As, as Ron said, it looked like an Auburn player. It looked like Gray had it. It went right out of his arms, and it was Culpepper who made the recovery. So the Gators, who were denied a moment ago, as the Gators, if you look at that graphic, 68 points. Straight ahead, Emmett Smith, touchdown Florida. Cal Dixon, the sophomore center out of Merritt Island, Florida, leading the way with a great block. And the Gators didn't take long to take advantage of the Tiger miscue. John David Francis to attempt the extra point. 12 of 12 on the year. So at 4.09 left to play in the opening period, we have a 7 0 for the lead following that fumble by Slack, the Auburn quarterback. Well, the Auburn middle guard, Richard Shea, playing with two broken hands at 59. Dixon has been doing a great job. Great block there. And here's what Emmett does so well. Gets low, has those strong legs churning, keeps his shoulders square, found a hole and ran through it. John Dirt, probably the finest offensive lineman for Florida, the right tackle on that side. Emmett yeah. yeah. Smith now with the 11 <laughs> touchdowns of the year. You know, with all the, the going uh, on distractions at Florida, we asked Gary Darnell how he keeps his team focused. Let's go back and relook at why he came here. He came here to be a good student, came here to be a good football player. And have a good time socially, you know, and that's you know that's basically what the league experience is comprised of. Well, by refocusing back to your simple values and what you hear, and make sure you're doing that every day, it's easy to start eliminating distractions. Gary Darnell taking over after Galen Hall resigned back on October the 15th. He's won the first two ball games in leading this play. Francis kicks it off. Grounder to the left side. Again, it is Cherry. Out of the 25. And that is where it will come to an end at the 27. Head high tackle by Greg Baldwin. Well, you talk about focus in this game, Ron. Reggie Slack all week. There's been a rumor circulating that he would not start this game, that he'd been suspended because he failed a drug test. It is just rumor and hit the wires today nationally. There was no truth to it, according to the Auburn people. Here he is starting the game. But what must he be thinking that the nation thinks he failed a drug test? Has to work on him a little bit. But it's absolutely not true. We want to make that clear. Joseph, left side, hurdles a tackle out of the 35 to the 36. Terry Watkins comes up from his left quarterback spot. Has some pushing and shoving going on after the play had ended. Florida defense is a little bit undersized, but they're very quick. What Auburn has to do is this, turn it upfield, run it between the tackles, run it right at that undersized defense. That's how they'll get yardage. They'll never outrun them sideline to sideline. They need to get big James Joseph turned upfield, bang, right between those tackles. Normally, Stacy Danley is in the backfield with him. He suffered a shoulder injury against Mississippi State. That's the reason Strong is starting today. Small crack from the left side. Godfrey Miles comes up into the pocket to make the hit. There's a look at Stacy Danley. Don't know if we will see him in action tonight. It was a shoulder that he knocked down against the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. 
Well, they really lose something because Joseph and Danley usually play in that backfield together, and they're both inside runners. And uh, Auburn has the ability to give it to either player and have them run tough inside. And now they're really going to have to rely on Joseph. trouble gets the pass away and it's caught for the tight end Victor Hall gonna wind up with a gain of about five of the play and that was Huey Richardson who was applying the pressure the All-American candidate the right outside linebacker number one Notre Dame yep they were ready to play and how about the Buffalo huge celebration at uh, Boulder this afternoon Michigan over Purdue winning by 50 Alabama over Mississippi State that one also finals. Joseph, who worked hard, almost flipped at the line of scrimmage. Jerry Odom. Odom is a great story. Junior out of Merritt Island, only 5'10", 221 pounds. And for lack of, of a better term, an overachiever yet. He is a coach's delight. He also is a coach's son. And most of the times, they are a delight to work with because they have seen a regimen that players have to go through. Jerry was asked about the Florida defense. He said, we're just a bunch of crazy guys out here. <laughs> Draw play. Fumble the ball on the ground. They still scramble for it at the 41-yard line, and Auburn recovers. Culpepper again in the middle of the action, causing the fumble. And coming up off the football is Reggie Slack. That's wow. a great play for a quarterback. What a play he made. You want a quarterback who's tough, and Reggie Slack is a tough kid, and he dove in there head first against a bunch of linemen and made that recovery. Richie Nell, 32 yards in the first punt. They got good pressure on him, but this one he almost didn't get away. His back foot slipped. But Auburn's going to get a great bounce all the way down to the 16-yard line. And the Gators will take it over deep in their own territory. There must be moisture on the field because watch his plant foot. Well, he's, yeah, he's barefoot, though. No, but it's, <laughs> the plant foot slipped a bit. <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll be right back. What do you get at Capital City Copy Shop? A whole opener here on ESPN. And uh, forget the records when the Cowboys and the Redskins get together. Always... A great party. Emmett Smith takes the pitch, goes right up the middle. He, Willie McClendon, I beg your pardon, on the carry. He takes it close to the 19-yard line. You tend to forget when you hear about Emmett Smith being in the backfield, but Willie McClendon, another Florida product, broke a record that some say would never be broken in high school. Emmett Smith rushed for 100 yards in 28 straight games. Willie McClendon in high school rushed for 100 yards in 33 straight games and rushed for well over 6,000 yards. And it's good. Looks on from the sideline. And it's a carry by Willie McClendon. Takes it out of the 27 to the 28. And that is enough for the Gator first down as Jaleco Anderson defensively makes the play for the Auburn Tigers. One of the things that the Auburn coaches... If you take a look at some other scores, Florida State, boy, they continue to roll after those first two losses. Illinois wins big, Arkansas over Rice, and that game was tied at 17 all late. California surprises Arizona for this. Oh, a big win for California. Yeah, big win for the Golden Bears. And it's Smith back in the ball game. Gets outside of the left. Across the 40 and another Florida first down as John Wiley comes up from his free safety spot to finally put the stopper on him. I want you to watch what Emmett does from behind. Watch the fullback. Now the fullback's going to disappear from your picture. Emmett's going to go up inside and now follow the fullback and outrun the defense. Now watch him turn up field. There go the shoulders square and bang. He's got 10 or 12 yards. And with that, the clock runs down. That is the end of the opening quarter here in Auburn, Alabama. The Florida Gators 7, the Auburn Tigers nothing. Well, as we open the second quarter, Florida 7 nothing, taking advantage of a Reggie Slack fumble at the five-yard line. Gonzalez hit in the backfield by Ogletree, knocked down for a big loss, back at the 35. 
was just a great defensive reaction by Ogletree. Now, you wouldn't expect Douglas to be passing the ball here. Good fake. They should bite on it, but look how he beats that block. Ogletree never even looks down. And he's able to beat that block. Nice play by Chloe Craig Ogletree. Dexter McNabb checks into the backfield at tailback for the Gators. Another yard loss, David Rucker this time. Well, they try to position block. Watch him try to position block Rucker. They're going to try to get on his outside and hold him in. This is dirt number 72. Watch him take the outside. And look at Rocker. Comes right upfield, gets a hand on him, and then come back. Stays on his feet, comes back, and gets the ball carried. Tremendous defense by Auburn. Third down for the Gators. They need the Auburn 48. Smith into a pile of blue jerseys led by Billingsley and it is punting time for Florida. You know what you see there, you see the you see the philosophy of Florida. Long yardage, they've done it twice now. They hand the ball to Emmett into the line. They don't have to worry about kicking the ball. They'll go for field position and let their defense do the job. Hank Rohn drops off to his own 24. with the return on good high good coverage kick Wiseman back at the 23 yard line 38 yards in the punt and the storyline on this one so far as we play early on in the second quarter the Auburn fumble as we said slack at his own five yard line and the result one play later and Emmett Smith scored rushing take a look at that in the first period 63 to 1 but Smith off to a good start this evening against an always tough and stubborn Auburn defense. <laughs> Joseph, right side, rules. He gets killed at the line of scrimmage. Mark Murray, a junior out of Zellwood, is the man who rocked his head back on the initial hit. The Heisman watch today, Anthony Thompson. Saw him on ESPN earlier today as Indiana lost 82 yards in 28 attempts. He did score a touchdown that put him in the record books for good. And of course, you saw Major Harris on that last ball game in a losing effort to Penn State, 166 yards for him. Joseph cuts it back into the middle. Somebody gets a hand on him. It's Culpepper who tripped him up as he crosses the 28 to the 29. Blair Thomas made a big push today. 150 yards. 32 attempts for him. As Blair goes, so goes Penn State. And Penn State has improved steadily. So has Blair Thomas. And there is Emmett Smith. His numbers tonight. Not the average that he would like to see. But the most important thing to him is what happens with this ball club. Right now, his team leads by a count of 7-0. Draw play by Slack right up the middle puts a head down he is at the 33 and that is extremely close as Huey Richardson steps up to make the defensive stop and they may have to bring the chains on this one nope not going to be close enough even for a measurement well that's a play that should work for Auburn all night and the reason Florida moves around a lot defensively and if Reggie can take a step back as he did there it's a planned quarterback draw bangle right up the middle there will be some holes Richie Nell drive spiral coming down to Lomack at the 22 gets a block at the foot no marker is down and he's going to be tackled inside the 20 yard line excellent coverage by the Auburn Tigers after a 45 yard beat of America by mobile one synthetic mobile oil mobile one is a jerk car worth the extra protection and by Budweiser B28 for that clean crisp taste this bud is for you there is one mascot that does not get any intimidation <laughs> from the opposing team. I would like to see Auburn play Air Force one time. In 
Donovan Smith to the right side. You can see he brushed off one tackler as he comes out across the 20-yard line. David Rocker again on the stop. He has had a great night as Fernando Horn also helped out. Houston as Ware got 477 yards. Wins by 45 over the Horn Frog. Boy, Virginia, congratulations to them. They have had a great season. Texas A&M. Clemson, 35-3 as they win their game today. And it's going to be a yard, maybe a yard and a half shy of the first down. Keep lying behind his blockers. In fact, it looks as though he is not hitting the 100%. And then all of a sudden, poof. You know, we talk about Emmett Smith and you talk about the Heisman. A couple of things about Emmett Smith with the problems that Florida has had. He's kind of been shunted aside and he's not in the spotlight, but he is the leading rusher in the nation at this moment. And a guy who will run the ball on third down and long and give up his yardage per carry, do team things, and he gets lost. I hope they consider him for the high school. He's a great player. And it's Smith. A pitch, but he takes it right up the middle. And that will be enough for the floor to first down. As Crawford defensively is there to make the stop. Yeah, I think your point is extremely well taken. Because as Coach Darnell defined so very well, he said, team guy, yeah, sounds corny a little, but he knows he's got to carry a bigger load. And he doesn't mind doing it. He carried it 31 times in last week's ball game. Yeah, for over 300 yards and largely ignored. Consider what he's done in this game. Twice on third and more than 10 yards, they ran him into the line. That hurts his statistics. Handoff goes straight ahead to the fullback, Daryl Perry. Out to the 33, Quentin Riggins. The 5'11 senior out of Montgomery comes up to make the hit. We talked a while ago about Florida's inside linebacker Jerry Odom. Quentin Riggins is very much out of the same mold as far as physically he's not necessarily a guy you would walk up and say, hey, he's going to be a great inside backer. But overachieved, yes he does. One of two seniors on the Auburn defense. Willie McClendon. Racked hard by Ricky Sutton, number 92. It's going to be a gain of about three in the play. And I'll tell you, every time we look up across the way, because of the orange and white, the marker is also orange. And we have trouble finding it because it's lost into the uh, Florida players' uniforms. I wonder if their offensive team is having the same trouble. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm a little upset. If I, if I wore an orange tie tonight, you know how many phone calls we've gotten? Why are the markers on Quarterback draw, Douglas right up the middle, has the first down and more. Frankie Stankunas, and every time we call his name, you see a headgear snap back. Boy, is he a hitter. Well, they would have... Florida, his home. They would have rather that Stankunas didn't make this play. They've got him in the game, they have to use him. Douglas is a great runner, quarterback draw. You saw Auburn use it before. The reason you do that is because they're very aggressive. Here's Dixon, and he's having a heck of a game, 59. All he has to do is turn the nose guard, Shea, who, by the way, is playing with two broken hands, and it's not that difficult to turn. Douglas, over the middle, first pass of the night, and he goes out into Auburn territory at the 49. Here's Kirkpatrick. They didn't know if they would have him tonight or not. He was about 85% injured in knee in practice the week before the LSU game. Comes out of the ball game with a very talented young sophomore by the name of Harvey Thomas. And Pompano Beach comes in replacing him. Correction of six yard gain on the play. Second and four of the Auburn 48. Straight ahead with the fullback, Cedric Smith. Close to the first down at the Cedric Auburn Smith 45. To the 45. White Crow Marty defensively. Sorry. Excuse me, Ron. Whitey Jordan, the offensive coordinator for Florida, called Cedric Smith the best he has ever coached, the best fullback. And you have to remember that Whitey Jordan was at SMU when Eric Dickerson was there. And uh, he coached a lot of great backs. And the reason he never complains, he does all the blocking for Emmett Smith. And if you see Emmett's statistics, you know what a good job Cedric Smith does. to take the left side of Fernando Horn. 
fill the hole more than adequately. It's fourth down at about two for the Gators. Well, what Emmett does so well through experience, Dexter may have a little problem doing. That is Emmett. That was Emmett Smith. I beg your pardon. I thought it was 21. It was Emmett Smith, and he really got cracked by Horn. Pressure from the left side. He almost got it. Ball is going to be taken on a very dangerous play by Washington, and he will go down at the 12-yard line. 34-yard punt. Gators continue to lead by seven. Which compact passenger van helps you stop best on the slippery curbs you drive on? Chevy Astro. And tonight's recipient, Florida fullback Cedric Smith. He is a rehab counseling major with a 3.1 grade point average, also a two-time member of the SEC All-Academic Honor Roll. Cedric Smith. Pitch comes to Joseph. Breaks one, breaks two, comes out over the 15. That is a great second effort as Richardson finally put a stopper on it. in possessions. This tells a great story. Look where Auburn has started tonight. 30, their own 8, 27, 24. You can't do much with that as far as play calling, and particularly Pat Bay gets very conservative in that territory, doesn't he? He will run the ball, no matter what. Strong, right up the middle. Marker goes down. Uh-oh, that's the umpire who threw it. Jimmy Harper comes up. Bartley from the secondary made the tackle, but it is offensive holding. And rather than a run, but it's taken it out across the 20. This one is going to go back inside the 10. During the run, holding in the offensive line. 10 yard penalty, second down. Well, here's a guy that runs a very tight ship. Not any lost time and uh, Mr. Harper is officiating, is there? Always well organized and right on top of it. Penalty takes it back to the eight yard line. Auburn trailing Florida, seven to nothing. Great to have you along this evening. Just under six minutes to play in this opening hand. And this is typical Auburn and Florida football. Lots of defense. The Tigers put it on the ground at their own five yard line and that's how Florida took advantage and went in front. Florida gets back as Joseph takes the pitch. He'll come across the 10 and Richardson steps up into the hole to make the hit. Huey Richardson only a junior on a lot of All-American teams. Nine sacks on the season. Mark Murray, number 54, was a linebacker. Watch him how he forces him inside. They moved him the defensive tackle because he played behind this man, Huey Richardson. And Huey Richardson, they weren't going to move him out. He's an All-American candidate. Makes the tackle there. They had to make Murray, at 240 pounds, a defensive tackle. But that is the philosophy of Florida. Speed. If you have speed, you can attack. If you can attack, you can get big plays. That's how they play defense. Slack back in the pocket. Pressure from the backside. Going to go long. Incidental contact. No marker goes down as Alexander Wright got tangled with the feet of the defensive back of Florida. Well, the key to this play, besides the fact that Reggie Slack throws it about 70 yards in the air, watch the defensive back's head. He's playing the ball. The referee sees that. That was Will White on Alexander, and he was looking at the ball all the way. No flag. Good call by the referee. Snell standing about four yards deep, but this is the fourth punt for Auburn tonight. This spiral is not going to turn over, and Lomack will down it at the 42. 32 yards in the kick, and the Gators take over with great field position, just under five minutes to play in Ohio. You know, with the negative publicity that the Gators have received, the accomplishments of Emmett Smith really have been lost, and we ask him about that. He's very frustrated. You hear that no one else's name out there considered Heisman candidate this, Heisman candidate this, and Smith had 316 yards, and that's it. I said, well, I guess I'm not a Heisman candidate anymore. So I, so, I sort of laugh it off. Emmett Smith, 
Emmett Smith, that it has been very frustrating in 1989 for him, as you saw his uh, fullback, Cedric Smith, with the carry right up the middle. Well, Emmett may be laughing it off on the outside, but I can tell you, when people do things wrong, whether they be administrative things or in the case of Florida with their quarterback being suspended, they need to remember that other people are going to suffer. In this case, Emmett Smith is suffering along with the rest of his teammates. Emmett takes the pitch, goes to the right side, hits very Emmett hard, Smith he will not make in. the 35. Well, here's the Heisman hotline. I want to get uh, your idea. What do you think? Who should win the Heisman Trophy? There's the number to call, 1-900-990-9000. And those are the touchstones that you will... Uh, that you will hit. Do you want Major Harris? Do you want Emmett Smith? How about Blair Thomas? Great day for him today. And a win over West Virginia. Andre Ware, almost 500 yards passing. You be the judge. It'll cost you only 95 cents. Florida needs the 32. Douglas drills the pass. Knocked down. That's Billingsley. Oh, what a play by Elton Billingsley, the senior out of Fairfax, Alabama. Has two interceptions on the season, and Kevin was within an inch of having his third. Yeah, he has six sacks, too. He's an all-around player. See, he came up, he checked the run, and now watch the reaction. He's playing against a rollout quarterback. He came along here. He's checking to make sure he's not going to run him. Jumps up and puts his hand up there. That's a great play. Rohn with the punt. Angles it for the far sideline. Florida has coverage downfield, and they're going to down it at the one-yard line. Alonzo Sullivan will touch it down. The Tigers are 99 yards away. Ron Franklin and Kevin Tyler with Auburn out of Alabama. 7-0, Florida on top. And there you see how much time is left. Look where the football is resting. with the handoff straight ahead. Joseph will go for a pop one, and that's it. Brad Culpepper, the nose guard, was the first man to make contact, and then Mark Murray. What else happened in the Southeastern Conference today? Well, it was Virginia Tech shutting out Vanderbilt. Georgia had to come from behind to Winterberg Temple, then they wanted big. Kentucky, good defense by Jerry Claiborne's ball club. They get the shutout. Ole Miss was down huge, came back and made a battle of it, but the Tigers, who we will see next week against Alabama, win it. 35-30. Slack puts it on his hip. Out of the backfield, it's Joseph. Has some running room up the near sideline. Finally tackled up the 30 by Jerry Oda. This is something Pat Dye just hates to do, but give him credit, he did it. Fake play action, and now Reggie Slack maligned sometimes for his passing, but he laid that one right on it to Joseph. And Will White saves what might have been a touchdown up the sideline. Number nine misses the tackle, but turns Joseph in for the rest of that defense. That was Fain that went flying by first. He was the first man that could not make connection. Slack now, three of four for 46 yards, throwing again. That's when misses the target badly. Darrell Williams, the intended receiver. You know, something we need to say, there were some scattered boos on the second series when Slack came on the field. But last week, there were more than scattered boos, and Coach Dye was really upset about that, that uh, his ball club was booed. There was no score at halftime against Mississippi State. But one point he made this week, he said, Reggie Slack, he's not our problem. He said, in fact, he made the statement. He said, right now, we don't have a personality on offense. But well, he said, it is not Slack's doing. He gets the blame. Last week, he gave them a personality. They ran the ball. Darrell Williams on the draw, up the middle, over the 35, and it's going to be third down Tigers, and they're going to need about four, as Ephesians Barkley, the strong safety for Florida, is there to make the hit. Darrell Williams looks like a little guy, number 45, they call him Electron. He's in the game, not because of experience, he'll do some wild things, including fumbling the ball, but he's a hot one. And they expect great things from him here at Auburn, he's a game breaker, and they're looking to pick up a little yardage on the ground. 5'9", 190 pounds from Pritchard, Alabama. Draw play. This time it's Strong. He will have the first down and more. Knocked down on the near sideline. Terry Watkins saved it as he cut back against the grain at the 50. 
gain of 13. Alex Strong is a senior, substituting for Stacy Danley tonight. He is out of Macon, Georgia, and he is one of them, a several married players on this Auburn team. Has a son, Alex the third. All right, Bob Meeks, number 70, making a good block. One of the things you can use against a team that's active and very fast and pursues is a draw play. They use it well there. Play action to Joseph. Wants to go long, and he's looking for right. He is open. Touchdown. will come back. There is a marker down at the 43-yard line erase. A 53-yard touchdown to Alexander Wright. Oh my goodness. Auburn fumbled at their own five-yard line. The Florida Gators scored in one play with Emmett Smith taking it across his 11th touchdown of the year. As the Tigers had just come back, they thought. And a face mask call against Auburn. What must they be thinking at Auburn? They've been waiting all year for something like this. Alexander Wright, one year of high school football, a speedster that doesn't run great patterns, but Reggie Slack hit him on the fly. He runs a 4-3, looked like a touchdown, comes all the way back to inside the 35. again. This one on a short route. Has it to his tight end, Gray. Bumped out of bounds on the near sideline at the 47. Auburn coaches really felt like they needed success in the passing game early. They're starting to get it. Less than a minute until halftime. Let's take a break. 7 to nothing. Gators on top. So what'd you use? My checkered face framing hammer. A new... College football Saturday continuing at halftime. Bob Carpenter will bring us up to date with all of the day's activities. Number one, Notre Dame won. The Colorado Buffaloes with a giant step toward the Orange Bowl. He'll have those highlights and a lot, lot more. Slap and second down. Big pressure, and he goes down. That's Philip Johnson. Only a freshman out of Clinton, Mississippi. Flag is down. Auburn calls timeout. The marker is down back at the previous spot. At the line of scrimmage. They are conferring with the captains of Florida who are signaling with the sack, of course, decline the penalty. Had an illegal formation. Offensive team, five men in the offensive backfield. Penalty is declined. Well, NFL game day, the award-winning show, 11.30 Eastern time. Get a head start on what is coming up in the National Football League. Then NFL primetime, 7 o'clock Eastern time, tomorrow evening, all here on ESPN. And, of course, we kick it off with the Dallas Cowboys and the Washington Redskins. That's 8 o'clock Eastern time. 7 to nothing, our score. Florida leads with only... 48 ticks left of the clock. Auburn on third down conversion. One of six. Slack rolls the pocket. Big pressure again. Out of bounds. Incomplete. Dale Overton, the intended receiver. It was Jerry Odom. You could see 57 come flashing into the picture. Now they're going to move the pocket with Reggie, try to buy him a little time to throw the ball, and they do. He has plenty of time. Odom coming up from that inside linebacker position, lays it on him, but he had a shot at completing that. Now with his fifth punt of this first half. Fair catch is called for and is made at the 26-yard line. Terrence Barber makes the reception. That's a 37-yard kick. And now Florida with 34 seconds left until halftime. Think they'll sit on it? You think they might put one up? Well, I think they're ahead of the game. I think the offensive coordinator for 
Florida, Whitey Jordan, who's one of the best 31 years in the business, said if we're even at halftime, we will be happy. We respect uh, the playing here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. They're ahead 7 to nothing. Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator also, before Jaden Hall stepped down. He is just going to go down on one knee. Now there's the one score in this opening half, and it followed a fumble by Slack. Emmett Smith, five-yard run, seven to nothing, and that's how we stand. Well, we talked about points being precious in this game. If not for that fumble by Slack, you have to expect this is a, this is a, a no-score game, and nobody would have gotten into the end zone. Clock is running down both clubs, heading to the locker room. 7-0. The Florida Gators lead here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Now let's go to Bob Carpenter to get an update on today's activity. All right, Ron. Thank, thank you much, Bob Carpenter. 7-0, as you said, here in Auburn, Alabama. That's our halftime score. That doesn't really surprise anybody as far as being a defensive battle and a low-scoring game. We continue our take a look at the Heisman. We saw Thompson earlier today at Indiana. We saw Major Harris in that last game uh, between uh, West Virginia and Penn State. And uh, also Blair Thomas. And, of course, uh, we are taking a look at uh, Mr. Smith, Emmett Smith, in this one tonight. In fact, we will look at uh, one of his runs in the first half. Kind of the forgotten man. Uh, of course, Florida, they can sit on the run because they don't have a great passing game. Now, Emmett, uh, Whitey Jordan will tell you, Emmett Smith learns the blocking schemes of the offensive linemen. He knows where they're going to try and block. And watch Emmett. He's a glider, picking up blocks, moving outside, taking advantage right here of a block by his, deep, by his uh, fullback. And look at the feet. Yeah, the feet, they never get far off the ground. He glides, he picks up 10, 12 yards. He was held to 39 yards in the first half. I was going to say, now, you know, he has never had a 100-yard ball game against uh, Auburn, and I would think with his caliber running back to hold him to 39 yards in one half, that is, uh, that's quite a feat. Well, a lot of guys get 80 yards in a game, and that's good, you know, uh, 39 and 39, 78. Uh, but for Emmett Smith, you expect more. But against an Auburn defense, which, by the way, may be the lost story here in the first half. It's 7 and nothing, but that was not courtesy of an Auburn defense that played very, very well against this Florida offense. It was a turnover and then a five-yard run. Second half, what do you look for? I look for Reggie Slack to throw the ball. Let's throw it here. Let's open it up, get some points. Simmons deep in the corner. He is the wide receiver flyer, but no, he will not get airborne on this one. In fact, he will not even get back to the 20-yard line. As Mike Smith on the special teams knocks him down at the 17-yard line. Take a look at the possessions in the first half. As neither team did that much really to write home about. As the Gators wound up with a total of 98 yards, and you could see the one five-yard touchdown, and that came after the fumble by Slack. The other drive, they used up some time, but no other points. The reverse. Lomax to the right side. Finally pushed out of bounds by Eric Ramsey. That's going to be up across the 30-yard line and around the 33. Good for a 14-yard run. Well, there are those numbers I was alluding to. 98 and 87. You look at that and say, wow, what has happened to both offenses? I think it, what has happened are the two defenses that are on the field. And you have very similar defenses and offenses there. You have contained defenses, and you have offenses that just don't want to take a chance. Florida got the seven points, and they're in their four corners now, and they're going to stall it. Play action to Emmett Smith. Pressure is on Douglas. He breaks off the tackle. Still on his feet and fights it out to the 40-yard line. And I'm telling you, the Florida bench was going absolutely nuts. The players were going crazy after the effort that the youngster made. Well, Donald Douglas is a popular player here and a great athlete and primarily a runner. You know, watch him. Watch the athletic ability here, and that's all it is because Auburn is all over him defensively. Four days after he came to school at Florida, his dad died. But he hung in there. A week later, a flood destroyed his mother's home. He stayed in school. He's a good student. He's still playing. Straight ahead. Oh, what a hit is the fullback, Cedric Smith. You could see him get rocked back. And speaking of rock, it was Rocker. 
who was the one who knocked him down. And in fact, an injury on the play to Daryl Crawford, one of the inside backers for the Auburn Tigers. All right, let's not forget about this Auburn defense. David, brother of Tracy Rocker, number 95, gets his hands, gets rid of the offensive blocker, hits the fullback, and able to knock down Cedric Smith. And that's just a tremendous play, warding off the blocker and staying in the hole by David Rocker. Some say he will be better than Tracy. Not yet, but someday. Still attending to Daryl Crawford. I think you could see on that replay as he went by, he reached out with his right arm. Now, is it the arm or is it the shoulder? Well, you don't like to speculate, but uh, when you play linebacker, you see where his arms are hanging right there? You like to keep your arms inside your shoulder pads. When they get outside, you put a lot of pressure on that chest, that pectoral muscle, and you have a tendency to rip your shoulder or your chest muscle. Simmons in motion, but it's in a Smith. They pitch it to him. He takes it between right guard and right tackle. The blocking of Bromley and Durden. Quentin Riggins is the man who puts it in to the run. And it's going to be a second down and long situation. Auburn's defense really needs to dictate to the Florida offense. They have a freshman quarterback in there in Donald Douglas. And this unit here needs to get them in long yardage situations. If they do, Florida basically just gives up. They're not going to put the freshman in the position where he has to complete a long pass. They'll run it into the line and punt it. And it's Smith. Sweep to the left side. Carries a couple of tacklers with him across the 53rd down Florida. It's got to be about two and a half yards. Riggins again with Stan Kunis defensively. One of the things with Emmett Smith, you need to make him make a decision quickly. Watch Ogletree. He's not going to make the tackle, but he's going inside, going to try to wipe out the interference. He busted up the blocking, made Emmett come outside where the rest of the defense could stop him. That's a good play by Ogletree. Crowd on their feet. Third down, Florida. The fullback. Right up the middle, and Billingsley is right there to make the hit. As Cedric Smith tried right guard, and the special teams come trotting on from across the way. One yard down the play. He's number 47, Billingsley. Of course, he plays on the other side from Ogletree. Closes down, sees it coming. Terrific job by Shea there. Piling it up, Billingsley makes the tackle. Hank Rome now with his for, uh, fifth punt of the night. Both teams have punted five times in this ballgame. Another good coverage kick. Wasden at the nine-yard line. 39 yards in the punt, and back at the line of scrimmage, there is a flag down. So the stoppage in play for just a moment. A note on Shane Wasden. He's out of Selma, Alabama. His dad played on the 57 National Championship team here for the Auburn Tigers. He missed the first two and a half weeks of uh, practice. That is holding. Called against the Florida Gators. Personal foul, I beg your pardon. Now let's look at the Auburn first half possessions. We mentioned in the second period that they were just having a scrimmage from really poor field position. The longest of any of those drives just before halftime, the eight plays. And of course, it was on that drive that they threw what they thought was a 50-yard touchdown pass, but it was brought back because of a face mask penalty. A field position critical for Auburn. They don't like to throw the ball deep in their own territory. To open up the offense, they need to be out around the 40. Joseph changes directions, has five, now six yards to the 31 before Jerry Odom comes over and makes the hit. Jerry out of Merritt Island. You know, that program has had to have won a lot of high school football games. It seems like every week we are mentioning kids from Merritt Island, Florida. They have a lot of youngsters playing college football. I think if you look around the nation, you'll find a lot of Florida kids on a lot of great teams. They have seen what seems like an endless supply. 
Inside handoff strong. It's a fine defensive play, and again, it's Odom. Gentlemen, we were just talking about 53 tackles on the year and two interceptions coming into the ball game. And he's 5'10 and plays a middle backer spot. Again, from the coaching family, you're going to see him a good surge by the offensive line, but Odom picking a spot and driving in and making the play. That fourth, that first half run was the fourth consecutive game that Auburn has not scored a touchdown in the first half. Seven to nothing, four to lead. Pressure on slack pass, incomplete over the middle, looking for his tight end, Victor Hall. And it was Miles who made the collision and knocked the ball free. They talk a lot about Huey Richardson here, but watch number 98. They call him a gifted athlete. That ball thrown a little bit behind the receiver, but a guy who can really make the big plays, and he did there. Lomack, the deep man for the Gators. Flags are down at the line of scrimmage. It is not the 25 second clock. Undoubtedly illegal procedure. And Florida had men around the punter again. Had I very concerned, obviously. His offense has had problems. The special teams also from time to time this year. Against Tennessee, they had uh, the bad snaps. Auburn is a team that has to do the basic things right to win. Booming spiral on this one. Lomack all the way back to the 18-yard line. So the Tigers will benefit from taking the penalty. 53 yards of trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. By Tempstar Furnaces, you can rely on the star. And by AT&T, the right choice. Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley from a jam-packed Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn, Alabama, 85,214. That's a new record crowd. Emmett Smith, right up the middle, carrying tacklers with him. Daryl Crawford, who was shaken up a moment ago, is the man who's stopping. Let's take a look at the SEC standings and the importance in this one tonight. Alabama undefeated. Florida and Auburn each with a loss. No team has ever won the Southeastern Conference with two losses. And of course, Tennessee still in the fray. They are three and one, losing only to Alabama. Florida does not play Alabama this year, but Auburn does. Smith again with a pitch. Tries to turn the corner. Not much there. Just has the submarine for a couple of yards. And Dennis Wallace, who was shaken up back in the first half and has been in and out of the lineup, is the man on the bottom of the pile. You can see him limping just a bit, favoring that left leg. The numbers on Emmett Smith now, 52 yards. Auburn's total rushing yardage tonight is 29. I remember Florida has the number one defense in the nation. They're only giving up an average. Of 79 yards. Emmett Smith has the first down at about seven more. Quentin Riggins put the stopper on him, but he's out across the 45-yard line. You saw that shot of Gary Darnell just a moment ago, and the point I was going to make before halftime is the defensive coordinator. Nothing had to change with him as the head coach because he was on the field anyway. He still does the job defensively. A classic Emmett Smith run. Look at the feet. Those feet were made for gaining yardage. Wasn't there a song about that? Keeps him loaded to ground, picks his way through the line. Douglas to throw. Zips it incomplete. Ernie Mills tried to uh, short hop it. Couldn't. They're simply throwing the ball, Florida, to put it on display. They have no desire or thought that they're going to move, the down, move down the field throwing the ball. They just want to keep Auburn from bunching up the line of scrimmage and shutting down their running game. Donald Douglas came into this game two for seven career he's one for three tonight he is not a threat throwing it and unless somebody runs out of out of bounds in the ball game we just have not had any stoppages of the clock that's one of the few with that incomplete pass 
This time they go with Cedric Smith, and the big fullback is wrapped up. It's Walter Tate. The big freshman out of Decatur, Georgia. Barbecue is his nickname. Haven't called his name very much tonight. 3.36 is what he started off the year. He's now down to 3.03. A mere sliver of his former self. Now Walter looked pretty quick on that play. He slows down and, and made the play. Quarterback draw. Douglas, close to the first down. Nope, they're going to push him back. He'll miss it by a couple of yards as Lamar Rogers, out of Op, Alabama, makes the stop and then gets a lot of help from some other blue jerseys. And an ovation for this Auburn defense is the punting unit that comes back on. Plus 91, classic play by 91, Lamar Rogers. He got his hands on the offensive blocker, kept him at arm's length. And then when he saw where the ball was going, pushed him off and made the play. That's terrific defensive line play. Wrong. Boy, he does a great job of the coverage kick. This is Washington at the 20-yard line. Tigers will take it over 80 yards away. A 26-yard punt. Gator 7. Tigers nothing. Somewhere between your head and your heart, exists a pain. In Pat Dye's eight years at Auburn, the Tigers have formed a pipeline to the NFL. Tampa Bay, Buccaneers select first choice in the first round. Running back from Auburn, Bo Jackson. A year later, the superb running skills of Brent Fulwood made him the NFL's third pick by Green Bay. And in 1988, the medicine style of Andre Bruce would make the Atlanta Falcons select him as the number one pick. 7-0, Florida on top of pipeline to the NFL. Very good way to put it. In fact, in just a moment, we'll show you how many youngsters have gone from Auburn University to the NFL. Average field position. The starts for Auburn have not been good. Joseph puts the head down. Not much there. He'll go for one, maybe a couple, as McCoy comes up into the hole and some scattered booze from this uh, record crowd tonight. Show you some of those numbers. The die way to the NFL. 41 of 45 players made the NFL in their first season. That was 81 through 1989 through present. There's the man who is responsible for Great those base. numbers. Great pay. They teach him basic football. They do a good job. Joseph on the draw play. Spins off one tackler, and then he will not get away from Mark Murray, who will knock him down after a gain of a half yard. And again, the Boo Birds come out. Well, you're looking at Mark Murray again, a player they felt they had to get him in the lineup. He was a linebacker, moved to defensive tackle. They are so quick. Nine players within a yard of the ball carrier when he went down for Florida. Florida, amazingly quick defensively. Harry Darnell, in spite of the problems at the University of Florida, they've kept it together. Tigers need the 30. Slap. Incomplete. Far sideline. Greg Taylor, the intended man. These boos are for Reggie Slack, but I can tell you that one of the problems that Auburn has had is the young receivers don't run the correct route. There's nothing wrong with Reggie Slack's arm, but a lot of times the receivers are not where they're supposed to be. A little more time wouldn't hurt either. Now he is at extreme pressure tonight. That's Lomax. Snell's kick. He gets this spiral to turn over. Lomack at the 40. Has a corridor down the side if he can get outside, and he cannot. Excellent coverage again by Auburn. It's Bernie Pierce on the special teams following a 40-yard punt and nine on the return. Well, the Heisman watch continues. Andre Weir, 477 yards, six touchdowns against TCU today, and that's a total of 36 on the season. What about Tony Rice? Well, he had one touchdown today on the season, nearing the 1,000-yard mark and seven touchdowns overall. And for the Rocket, he was injured today. 36 all-purpose yards for him. Douglas wants to throw, runs out of the pack, crosses the 40, and boy, does he get belted down at the 42. Billingsley 
the first man there, along with Pierce and also Quentin Riggins. I have one of those. You see that alligator with the air that I can lay a go in the ocean with that. And you're willing to admit it to the nation. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, there it is. I hold on to those little black handles and kind of battle around. And I have a shark, too, actually. And it gets crowded in that car. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Pitches back to Emmett Smith. No, sir. Rocker steps up into the hole. And even with the thrust that Rocker had when he hit him, Emmett Smith almost broke forward for a yard. Going to be third down, Gators. They'll need a couple. You're starting to see a defense come to life and mature as the season goes on. 95 left of your screen. Watch the hands. Get to, see that? Holds the blocker off. That's just tremendous defensive technique. Keep the arms length. Find out where the ball is and boom, right into the hole and make the tackle. David Rock. Emmett Smith. He will be knocked down for a loss. It's Quentin Riggins. If you've got Emmett Smith in the backfield, the defense isn't picking pass with a freshman quarterback. Smart defense. Bring everybody up. Blockers, they're down. Here comes Quentin Riggins and the gang, and the Auburn defense playing pretty well tonight, too. Wasden, no fair catch, cuts it up the middle across the 30, tackled at the 34-yard line. Carlton Miles got down to make the hit for the Gators. 7-0, Florida leads. In our forklift business. Florida on top, 7 to nothing, and <laughs> the tiger in the Gators mouth right there. And that's the situation in the ball game so far. Yep. 349 left in this third period. Slack. Good protection this time. Out of the backfield, complete to his tight end. It is Victor Hall has the first down at about five more. position, field position, that's why they began on the 32. This 85,000 plus, and that's a tie for the largest crowd. Amazing you could tie at that high a number. Joseph to the right side, inside the 40s, down to the 37. Culpepper defensively, and right now, the Tigers with Ole Mo on their side. That's good for 14 yards. It's getting late. If you want to win the SEC, now's the time. A pitch to Joseph. Now, Joseph became a team leader last week when he ran for over 150 yards. He's been running tough all night. Good blocking from the offensive line. Another first down. Joseph tries to spin off a tackler. That's Jerry Odom who says, nope, I'm not going to let you by. Odom goes off the field immediately. Boy, in the crowd tonight, I have a feeling, Kevin, that on the 2nd of December, that that record might go of the 85-214. There's the ticket right there. You talk about a tough ticket. The first time ever that the University of Alabama will come here to Jordan Hare to play. Slack him second down. Far sideline. It is complete. Overton. Steps out of bounds, just inside the 30. Overton was the one receiver that really had a big night or a good night against Florida State. The reason, he runs good patterns. We talked about the fact that Slack has had problems with guys not running good patterns. Overton runs a precise pattern, and Reggie right on the money. Able to turn it upfield for a first down. 6 of 11 for 84 yards right now for Slack. Joseph looks for a block. Loses the football. Loose and it'll stay with Auburn. They were the last to have control of it. They lose yards, but as far as the best of any scenario for the Auburn Tigers, they hold on to the football. 
is. Good hard running by Joseph. A tremendous blow getting up underneath for him. The ball going out of bounds. No harm done. That was Jim Paul with a tremendous uh, tackle right up under the pad. Tigers will go for a field goal attempt. The ball will be placed down at the 37-yard line, so a 47-yard attempt. His longest is just this. Lyle has hit one from 47 this year. Has the distance. It hits the upright and goes through. One question, how did you know this had the distance? <laughs> you got pretty good eyes, Ron. Well, watch it. It does, doesn't <laughs> it? Gwen Lyle, as we said, has already hit one from 47. Watch it hit the bar. You, hit the you, bar? You saw it all the way, huh? You bet. I... <laughs> See, I also was allowing for the win. <laughs> and that's the distance already as he hits the crossbar. That ties his season's longest. And look at the reaction from Slack of the sideline as Pat Sullivan just in front of him, the quarterback coach for the Auburn Tigers. Seven to three, our new score. And all of a sudden, this Auburn crowd is back into the ball game. Well, the Florida defense has done a tremendous job keeping the crowd out, all 85,000, but that field goal got him lit up here. the kickoff. Bangs it high to the left side as the champ goes out. War Eagle. This is Simmons. At the 20. Breaks off two tackles and he will be nailed at the 25. Stan Kunis. Oh, what a hitter this young man is. When he's around the football, heads jar. Speaking of jarring, Ole Miss was down big came back to make a game of it, but the LSU Tigers win by five, and of course we'll see the Tigers next Saturday night against Alabama. USC huge over Oregon State. Fresno State and San Jose, that one is early. Tulane at halftime over the Tigers of Memphis State. Douglas on the short drop. Quick out pass, and again, it is short. As Miles plays shortstop, and that is the identical situation he had before. Ball was just not up enough. Donald Douglas again. Auburn daring them to pass. And Donald Douglas, that freshman, having difficulty throwing the ball. He is not a pure passing quarterback. He's one for four. He's missed three in a row. Six-yard completion is the only thing. That was over the middle to the tight end. He'd only thrown seven passes coming into this game tonight in his college career. And it's Smith. They pitch it, takes it up the middle, breaks off one, two, three tackles, and he will have the Florida first down out at the 39. John Wiley, the free safety, has to make the tackle. When you think about the Heisman, think about Emmett Smith. John Durden, number 72. Look at the block as he turns. Wilson there, and here comes Emmett, never picking his feet up. And when everyone in the house knows he's going to get the ball, he picks up enough for a first down. That's a tremendous run. Won't 24 like carries for him for 77 yards. A tough 77, too. Play action. Douglas tries to keep that is absolutely great defense. John Wilson. You think that Auburn is not well schooled. They had that one in their hip pocket. Wayne Hall, defensive coordinator, a running quarterback. Now, he's a surprise starter. He wasn't named until tonight. But look at Wilson. Not fooled for a minute. He and makes the tackle. That's a 6'6", 252-pound guy. That's great lateral movement, huh? Haleyville, Alabama. Only a sophomore. And we go back to that statistic. Only one player that ever started for Auburn on the defensive line did not make all conference. Smith right up the middle. Gets by Riggins in the vicinity of the 40-yard line. And it's going to be a third down situation and almost 10 for the Florida Gators. As Walter Tate and again John Wilson helping out. Pat Guy said without hesitation in our meeting yesterday that he thinks next year the Auburn defense 
since they lose only two people could be the best defense Auburn has ever had. Partner, that's saying something. All right, look out for screen and draw here, or option. Douglas rolls the pocket, looks for some place to run. Oh, my goodness, what a hit, Darrell Parker. Yes, Darrell, takes the bow. You got to love it. It's a defensive game. Douglas did a very poor thing there. He slowed down and stopped. The four fingers go up, and that means that's the end of the third. Gator seven, Tigers three. And join the Chris Berman of the guys in the morning, 11.30 a.m. 7-3 our score. The Florida Gators on top. Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley from a house of over 85,000 at Jordan Hare. And that gentleman right here here is Hank Rohn. He says, guys, I want to punch the football. I'll tell you what, you got to love him if you're a special team coach. He not only gets you distance, he comes between four and five seconds with every punt. And if he does again what he has most of the evening, watch how many white jerseys are around the deep return man by the time he catches it. His average is actually under 35 yards, but they have not been hurt by returns. Now this one not quite as good. Washington on the run will go down at the 28, but still you can see a lot of Florida players around it. Well, the four fingers you saw just a moment ago at the end of the third. Many say that tradition started down here at the Southeastern Conference. There are some who say Bear Bryant was the first one to put it into play. But it's something you see all over the Southeastern Conference. And now all over the country for that matter. I think the theory is that who owns the fourth quarter? They are the team that normally walks away with the victory. Joseph comes left side. Boy, does he get stuck. And again, it is Tim Paul. Hawk is another one, just like Stan Kunis for Auburn. And when they get around the football, you see heads jar. And the Tigers have a player shaken up. It looks like Rob Selby, the big junior tackle out of Birmingham. He's the strongest man on the team. Preseason all-conference pick. You see the braces on the knees, and he is favoring the right leg. The middle breaks it big, has the first down, and he's out to the 45. Ephesians Bartley, from his strong safety spot, finally put a stopper on it, but that's good for 15 yards, and now Strong is injured, holding, it looks like, his left shoulder, and Florida has a player down, a flat of his face, back at the 28-yard line. That's Mark Murray. Ed King made the block there, turned him as a draw play. It was a good hold. Strong was able to get up for the first down, but give it to Ed King, the left guard, number 67. Storyline through three periods. Auburn had a 50-yard touchdown, taken away because of a face mask penalty. And the longest drive... University of Florida, 36 yards, Auburn 37. I would remind you of one thing. On the 36-yard drive by Florida, great defense by Auburn pushing and back. And on that drive in the first quarter, they still used up 7 minutes and 11 seconds. But yet they came away with no yardage. And you can see the numbers on that man, Emmett Smith, who is trying to crack the 100-yard barrier. He has not been able to do that against an Auburn football team. One of those years, he was injured. ESPN's College Football Saturday uh, kicks off every week at 11.30 Eastern Time. Uh, Bob Carpenter, Bino Cook, and Lee Corso, they'll preview the day coming up in college football. Then at 12.30 next week at the Big Ten, it is Iowa taking on Ohio State. At 4 o'clock, we head to the Southwest Conference. The Bader Bears of Grant Taft will take on Coach Kenny Hatfield's Arkansas Razorbacks, number 11 rank. And then at 7.30 next Saturday night, Kevin and I will be in Baton Rouge. LSU meeting... The fifth-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. Joseph on the flea flicker. Slack has his arm hit in the air, knocked away, and it's an incomplete pass. 
Culpepper and Richardson with a man's putting on the pressure on slack, and then it turned into like a jump ball in basketball. Well, how good is this Florida defense? Now, this is a play that would work against a lot of teams. Flea flicker, no way. These guys are back there, and they're ready to make the play defensively. And here's Reggie Slack. How good is the Florida front? Well, they didn't get fooled either. Culpepper coming on and making the hit on Slack. No play there. From behind, Slack gets away. Points for a blocker inside the 50. He is going to be close to the first down. Let's see where they're giving forward progress. Willie White saved it. Looks like a gain of 10, and he is shy of the first down by one. That was Phil Gutter, number 93, who looked as though he was going to catch slack from behind. Seven to three, Florida leads. Just about to hit the 13 minute mark left in the ball game. Joseph, right up the middle, Joseph, first down, down over. The key for Auburn here in the second half has been the passing game. They've able to be, been able to complete a few passes, and that's opened up a little bit of the running game, and Ricky Slack scrambling, which I thought going in would be a key. If he could pull it down, shake up the Florida defense. He did it on that last play, and it set up the first down. An update of Mark Murray he took a shot in the knee. He will be back. You can see Joseph coming out of the ball game. This is Williams. Darryl Williams the ball takes it for three. McCoy and Huey Richardson defensively. Well, you can watch that Williams youngster. On the Very quick first step. Florida was there to knock him down. Coming up next, the Residence in College Football Scoreboard Show. Game, second and eight of the 7 to 3, Florida over Auburn. Williams cuts it back inside to the 37. Miles and more. You saw James Joseph leave a few minutes ago, number 10. I believe he was injured or shaken up. He's not in the game, and that brings on old Electron Williams. Again, the reason he does not play is because of his inexperience, and he has a tendency to lose the ball. James Joseph injured a leg against Mississippi State just a week ago. And the junior out of Phoenix City. Been playing with some aches and pains tonight, but he's been there. But he's getting a breather right now. Play action. Slack under heavy pressure. Hit. Now he gets it away. Gets it out on. That was Mark Murray, who we were just talking about, would come back into the game, was holding out of Slack, and he couldn't get him down. Well, Mark Murray has played a tremendous game, very quick, number 54 from the outside. Now, Reggie thinks he's going to be all alone out there, but look at the strength of Slack. 6'2", 211, get rid of it. It is fourth down. Auburn needs the 34-yard line of Florida. Just not too long ago in the ball game, I mentioned it how well schooled Auburn was against a play action and reverse out by Florida, and the Gators come right back and demonstrate the same thing. Defensively, it is extremely hard to fool either one of these clubs. House kick very high. Auburn with players all around inside the five, dead at the two. Billingsley touches it dead, seven to three. Florida leads. Well, we understand that there is a flag back at the line of scrimmage at the 33. We'll hold it here for just a moment. Now that is against Florida. Auburn only needed two yards. Procedure against the Florida Gators. That is a first down. Auburn to hit a touchdown, take it away. You look at Gary Darnell, back in the first half, on what appeared to be a 50-yard touchdown pass. If Auburn scores on this drive, put an asterisk by it. There were 12 men on the field, and I'll tell you what caused it. The man to the left of your screen. 
saying, get off, get off. The reason they did this is because Auburn waited to put their punt team on until the last minute, confused the Florida defense, and they wound up with an extra man on the field, and it gave Auburn a first down. Give that one to the coaching staff. Joseph, boy, what great defense, 44 Bailey. Coming up from the strong safety spot, the minute he saw it was run, was uh, a run play, made the commitment, and that's where, when you see secondary guys coming up that quickly, you got to have some pass from time to time to keep them honest, Jeff. Well, they tried that bootleg, and if you remember the last time they tried it, Reggie Slack with a naked bootleg trying to get on the outside, he was dropped for a loss. They read that eye formation and they come hard. But strong safety was playing like a linebacker. Slack at a short drop over the middle. Victor Hall down to the 22-yard line. He's going to miss the first down by just about a half yard, it would appear from here. Ten minutes, 26 seconds left in the ball game. Four to seven, Auburn three. Both teams with one loss. And as we have mentioned a couple of times tonight, nobody has ever won the Southeastern Conference with two losses. Joseph looks for some blocking. It will not happen. Pat Moore, along with Tony McCoy, double teaming on the stop. And also Huey Richardson, big number 90. I formation, they toss it to him deep. There's no way you're going to outrun the Florida defense. Watch the orange hats get outside here. Now they give it to Joseph deep in the back here, but look how many guys come down the line of scrimmage. Five Florida Gators. They're so much faster than Auburn's offensive line. They're running them down when they try to go wide. Well, as we said, about 12 inches, maybe 18. They will go to a full house backfield. Third down. Auburn simply doesn't care about the clock because there's plenty of time left. They just like to keep eating it up along with real estate. It is fourth down. Now they have changed it. Fourth down for the Auburn Tigers. They need the 21. Joseph straight ahead. The best way to attack Florida is right at him, and that's what they do. Joseph over John Hudson, King, and Rose. Straight ahead. They give it to their toughest running back, and here's Pat Dye. This is his kind of football game. Yeah, first down. And he knows they have never gone into Amen Corner, as Pat Dye calls it, and been out of contention for the SEC title. Joseph looks for a block, finds one, then loses his footing. He is down to the 16. It'll be a pickup of about four. Teapot Brown into the ball game at fullback. It's only 5'7", 193 pounds for a good block of the play. Sophomore out of Dothan, Alabama. A player they say would not have been signed by many teams, Teapot Brown, a hard-nosed, inside working type of guy. A blocker. Harvard's going to have to hurry on this play. The 25-second clock is already down to six. And Slack looks up, sees the clock with two seconds on it, and he calls a timeout. And, of course, that is not the game clock. It is the play clock. So the timeout is called. We'll be right back. This is the play in the ball game.
Joseph with the pitch. Penetration by the Florida defense, and again it is Jerry Odom. Oh my goodness, what a game this young man has played. Odom sitting up there, and he's reading the eye formation. Again, they try to go wide, and again, the speed of the defense of Florida. Now watch Odom. He's off the block immediately, and then down the line against the eye formation. It starts deep in the backfield. Tough to get the line of the scrimmage when you go wide. These guys are too quick. Inside the 20 for the Tigers. 16 of 18 times they've scored. Tight end. Over the middle. Tight end is exactly right. Victor Hall. First down, Auburn Tigers. One of the things you can do against the defense that's running their inside linebackers like Odom up the middle is release that tight end quick. They're trying to put a safety on him, but he turns. Reggie Slack hits him. First down. First and goal, Auburn. Line of scrimmage, the Florida eight-yard line. Joseph, maybe a yard, and now a couple to the six. Philip Johnson, the big freshman out of Clinton, Mississippi, knocked his feet out from under. Tell you what's going to work here. And one of the problems with Danley out of the game and Joseph moves to tailback, they do not have a regular fullback in the game. Alex Strong is in the game. If they can slip it to the fullback with Florida pursuing on a little bit of a counter, there might be a hole and they could get in the end zone. This is the 17th play of this Auburn drive. Williams runs into his blocker and he's going to be stopped at the five. He ran into the guard, Ed King, who was out pulling on the play. That stopped his momentum just long enough for Pat Moore to get there. One of the things a running back learns when he gets experience, of course, Darrell Williams doesn't have, is he learns to keep his head up and read the blocking. Darrell Williams, I've noticed in this game, is running to the hole. You don't do that anymore. You run and you pick holes. We've showed you with Emmett Smith all night, and Joseph does it well, and Danley, if he was in the game, would do it well. It's been a problem for Auburn. The Tigers take a timeout. They have a huge third down play coming up. It is third and goal from the five. Six minutes, 33 seconds left to play in this one. The bump the end. Seven to three, our score. Fourth period. That's how much time we have left. It is goal, goal to go. Third down, and look at time of possession in the fourth period. For Auburn, eight minutes, 20 seconds. The Gators have had it only seven. Draw play. Joseph hit in the backfield. He will get nothing. Brad Culpepper. Also, Mark Murray, number 54. Well, Murray's played a well of a game. Again, speed. This is an attacking defense. Here's 54. Coming on the corner. Sees the draw, but the hit by Culpepper is what made the play, and Murray cleaned it up. Culpepper in the middle. Murray on the outside. Wayne Lyle. Excuse me, with a 22-yard attempt. Kick is blocked. You think Kerry Darnell is not willing to display some emotion. Blocked in the middle of the line by the Florida Gators. We talked about this team being able to focus. I don't think there's any question that Florida has been able to focus. Let's see who gets it. It looks like 99 Tim Paul. <laughs> Gary Darnell, interim coach for Florida. Douglas straight ahead. Cedric Smith takes it for a couple of yards. That drive, by the way, 19 plays, 67 yards, using up nine minutes. There's Paul, and I believe he is the man who got it. Seven to three, Gators on top, with the clock running with five minutes, 25 seconds to play. Smith 
left side will have a couple, maybe three, and it's going to bring up a very important decision as far as the Gators are concerned. They've got five yards to pick up. They don't want to have to give the ball back to the Auburn Tigers. Will they put it up? I'm playing defense. I have 11 guys on the line of scrimmage here. I wouldn't let them know it, but that's what I have. This is a, if this isn't a handoff to Emmett Smith, I've never seen one. John Franklin and Kevin Kiley, Jordan Hare Stadium, the 50th anniversary of this stadium. Same two teams played the first game to a 7-7 tie. Pitch goes to Emmett Smith. There is nothing there. Walter Tate. Big number 76, the freshman out of Decatur, Georgia, puts it into it. And the punting unit comes on for the Gators. I'll tell you, a game of chess, and Gary Darnell has a tremendous amount of confidence in this fella and his defense. What a tribute to his defense that he would run the ball three times. Gators checking, making sure they had 11 men on the field. Auburn has the return on. This fire will not turn over. Watson with a fair catch at the 42, and a flag comes down. And the only thing room. we could see, yeah, is the two-yard barrier was not observed. That is the ball. Five yards marked off against the Gators. So here's the situation. Just walked into the house and turned on the television. Seven to three. Florida on top. 356. Left to play of the Well, as you take a look at the Southeastern Conference standing, somebody is going to be out of the picture after this one tonight. Alabama perfect at 5-0. and oh. Florida and Auburn at 3-1. and one. And of course, so are the volunteers of Tennessee. Tigers trailing by four. And they have just under four minutes to do something about it. into the flat, complete to Joseph, his running back. He will take it inside the 50. It's going to be a gain of about six yards in the play. Willie White and Godfrey Miles combining on the stop. Slack has thrown for 1,134 yards this year. Auburn's only thrown, or with him anyway, 156 passes. Darrell Williams checks into the backfield, number 45. Inside to Strong, breaks it open for the first down. He's in the vicinity of the 35. Moore tripped him up. They're going to say that his knee touched just outside the 36. The only way to attack this defense is right at it. They're smallish defense and very fast. Use it against them. Clock about to go under three minutes. Overton is in the game, number four. Very good pattern receiver for Auburn. Pitch comes to Williams. Turns it up at the 30. Got caught by the arm and it stopped at the 28-yard line. Fain got a hand on him, but the man who actually slowed up what could have been disastrous for Florida, it was Murray who grabbed him to the arm. He's about to slide to the outside. He may have had open field. Take a look at it. Number 54, Murray will come into your picture. Electron. He's electric, and there's Murray grabbing his arm. And he was about to bust it. Pitch goes to the other direction to William. Whistle on the play. He's still running. I think procedure against Auburn. It looked as though the snap came before everybody was set. Yep, that's the call. Boy, boy, you go from a second and two to a second down and seven. Game clock shows two minutes, 26 seconds left to play. Florida leads by four. And that came back in the first half after Slack fumbled at the five-yard line, and Emmett Smith on the very first play took it in from five yards out. checking where the penalty took it 
back to. Now they needed about two yards for the first down. Trying to see, I think the, that official was saying he only penalized him. Well, thought he was saying they penalized him four yards instead of five, but they're going to leave it there. Auburn Tigers have one timeout remaining. I'm thinking draw play here. Slack rolls it, looking for somebody. Will run for the first down at the 24. Paul Pepper finally got it. Interesting. Out on the right side, Greg Taylor was there, and he didn't do anything to help this quarterback out. He kind of froze when he saw him scrambling instead of coming back toward the middle or at least making a move. Two weeks ago, we saw Auburn come back and almost tie Florida State. The key to the final drive was Reggie Slack breaking down and leaving the pocket, running upfield. Number 54, only a junior out of Zellwood. Good heavens, what a defensive display by him tonight. All the way back to the 38. He's just too quick. Look how quick he is. They had to get him on the field, so they made him a defensive tackle. Aren't they glad they did? Gary Darnell. Well, he looks like he'd like to suit up, doesn't he? That's the third sack by Florida tonight for a loss of 26. And Auburn has to burn their last time out with 1.20 to play in the ball game. So let's take a timeout. 7-3, Florida on top, only 80 seconds left in this one. Lately, Showtime's been making claims we think are overinflated. They say they have big films, but they don't say how many. That's because it's HBO that has eight out of... Boy, you have come down to this. A minute, 20 seconds remaining in the Southeastern Conference battle with Florida on top. Leading by four, and Auburn now out of timeouts. So look out for number four, Overton. Black tries to roll the pocket. Pass is complete. Taylor is going to be tackled inbounds. He could not get out at the 24. It'll be third down. They still need the 14 and a half yard line. The clock just now started running again. He didn't go out of bounds. Now they haven't spotted the ball. They can't run the clock. Oh, no, that's a mistake. Slack out of the backfield. This is strong, and he falls out. He's going to lose a yard. Richardson, I think, got a piece of the ball. It's going to be fourth down on it. At the 25. Fourth down play. Slack going long. He's up by it. Touchdown, Watson. to put Auburn up by three, and he does. 26 seconds left in the ball game. Kevin, how in the world did Shane Washington get so open on a fourth and ten? A Florida defense that did not, literally did not make a mistake the entire night. We talked about Reggie Slack. He's hung in there. Washington came into this game with four catches for 36 yards. No one covered him wide open and Reggie Slack good reason to celebrate tremendous play and they I'll tell you Auburn hung in there go to Florida what about Pat Dye on the play he's 
saying he's open. He's open. Reggie saw it and the touchdown. And the amazing thing about the play also is Auburn had to hurry to the line of scrimmage because it was fourth down and the clock was still ticking away since yeah. Strong was down in the field of play. And that may have caused Florida the confusion. You can see the frustration on the Florida bench. And hasn't it been a year already of frustration for Florida with all their problems and then to be hit like that with 26 seconds remaining? The Gators have one slim hope left. Look at the clock. 26 ticks remaining. Auburn on a fourth down play. Taken and a fair catch is called at the 21-yard line. Monty Grohl made the fair catch at the 21. Clock shows 23 seconds now. Florida with all three timeouts left. They lose three seconds on a fair catch. How does that happen? It's a good question, sir. Checking the passing stats on Douglas tonight. One of four, six yards. <laughs> Douglas, 35 at the 40. Hit from behind at the 45-yard line. Timeout by the officials, and now Florida will call a timeout. Coach Darnell signaling favorably to get the timeout. Big yardage picked up on the play, but of course, 10 seconds also taken off the clock. Well, if you're wondering, Lex Smith, who started last week, thrown four passes, seven passes, completed four of them for 39 yards. Of course, Kyle Morris, the suspended quarterback, had passed for well over 1,000 yards this year, and he was the passer for Florida. They literally do not have a passer with any experience on the team. Coming up next, the residents in college football school board, Bob Carpenter and Lee Corso. We'll show you highlights of what has happened around the country today. The Colorado Buffalo win probably the biggest game ever played in that state for them over the Nebraska Cornhuskers and a giant step toward the Orange Bowl on the 50th anniversary of this stadium what a ball game these two teams played the very first one here in initially what was called Auburn Stadium they battled to a 7-7 tie 13 seconds left Douglas gonna run again. Hit hard by Riggins, knocked out at the 47-yard line. Timeout called immediately with five seconds remaining. Score is 10-7. Auburn leads it. They lead it on the basis of this play just a few moments ago. Reggie Slack on a fourth down. A desperation pass and finds a wide open Jane Wasden in the end zone. Rolling around, nice catch by Wasden who catches punts, has the sure hand. Touchdown. Auburn. Late. 26 seconds remaining. Now five seconds remaining. Florida maybe one more shot. Number, number 98, Godfrey Miles, as you said, the, the only man closest to it. And I think the point you made talking about the hurry-up offense that Auburn was having to run since the ball was still on the field of play. And normally teams just don't hurry back to the line of scrimmage on a fourth and ten situation. And it was just enough to cause confusion on the part of Florida. Remember the other big play was the punt, the penalty on the punt. That also happened. There was some confusion. Hail Mary going for the corner of the end zone and it is Knocked away by Auburn. <laughs> Emmett Smith, a great running back for the Florida Gators, and the picture. Extremely 
Jerry Odom. What a ball game this youngster played. to be happy for Auburn, but for Florida, I think you need to, you need to hope that something good happens for Florida too. It will. Really rough here. When, when you play that way, it, it will. What an effort. What an effort. Kenneth Smith still has not left the field, kneeling at the 37-yard line. And here's a frustration. Emmett tonight, 27 carries, 86 yards. So we will take a break. Triple zeros on the clock, and the Auburn Tigers come from nowhere to win it. Once again, our final score here at Jordan Hare Stadium, the Auburn Tigers 10 of the Florida Gators 7. Kevin? Uh, you know, I don't know where to begin in a game like this. There were so many remarkable performances, the defense for Auburn and the great defense for Florida and the tremendous comeback by Reggie Slack late in the game in the pass to Shane Watson. The only thing I'd like to leave you with the end of a game like this when you think about the University of Florida think about the kids that didn't do anything wrong the kids that hung in here tonight and played one well of a ball game against the championship team of Auburn and have some feelings for them they're great kids and they play their hearts out but the nice piece of players of the game are from the University of Florida defensive uh, lineman Mark Murray five tackles two sacks and from Auburn University, Reggie Slack, 12 of 19 for 147 yards, the biggest of all, one touchdown, and that is the one that won it. And as part of their continuing development of amateur athletics, as we look at that touchdown pass to Wasden by Reggie Slack, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team. The sights and sounds of college football, Slack, and Coach Dodd, and the other side of the coin, tears from Emmett Smith. Now for Kevin Kiley of our ESPN crew, I'm Ron Franklin. Let's join Bob Carpenter for our residence in college football scoreboard show. All right, Ron, thank you very much. From Auburn, Alabama, where the Tigers hold on to win at 10-7 with a great comeback. And that means that December 2nd game against the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Hare Stadium will be 